Hello and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. I'm your host, Sarah, and I was debating the topic for my first full-length video. Um, I have a bunch of ideas that I want to get to eventually, um, but I thought a great place to start would be my tips for um, people who are new to tarot as I am uh, in terms of starting your own tarot practice. So if you are brand new, um, or maybe if you've thought about starting or you've, you've just begun your journey but you're feeling a little bit um, overwhelmed with all the different options and resources out there, um, this video might help. Um, and I want to say up front that there's really no wrong way to practice tarot or to get into it, start learning about, about it. Um, but I think these three ideas are um, kind of good, grounded starting points. Um, and kind of something I wish someone had told me about um, when I first started out. So the first um, option is going to be the simplest, and that is grab any tarot deck that appeals to you, that you like the artwork of, um, that sparks your imagination and your interest, and just start working with it. Um, don't read any books, don't feel like you have to have any um, you know, set definitions for what the cards mean. Um, and I do use air, air quotes there on purpose because um, really cards don't have set definitions. But, um, you know, just start, just grab a pack of cards that you like and, and just start using them. Um, you can go through the cards one by one. You can journal about them. Um, you can meditate on them. You can do, you know, a daily study of each card and, and see um, how that card presents itself in your day-to-day -day life um, and um, you, you know but don't don't worry about the booklet don't worry about getting it right or wrong just dive in and start practicing with it you can even give yourself you know readings ask a question draw some cards and and see what the pictures um, seem to be saying to you um, in response to your question that's the simplest way um, it's also the le least expensive way especially if you already have a tarot deck maybe you've you know, found one, inherited one, a friend gave you one, um, you picked one up at a garage sale or something like that. Um, if you're just, you happen to have a tarot deck and you're interested in learning more about it, um, you will connect with the cards in some kind of a way. And um, that's one of the, the most important things about tarot practice, any kind of tarot practice, is connecting with the cards, understanding um, the messages that they can transmit to you. Um, in the moment. So, so that's the first one, you know, basically you just need a pack of cards and a notebook and some time. Um, if you are like me uh, and you come from a more academic um, way of learning new topics, I love to do research. I love to sort of come up with my own curriculum and, um, you know, I've been joking with my husband uh, that I, I'm giving myself a master's degree in tarot studies right now. Um, because I just love, I love to read, I love history, I like to know all the different facets of something, all the different sides. And, um, but that said, it can also be very easy to get bogged down and overwhelmed, especially when you're first starting out with, you know, all the sometimes conflicting information out there about tarot. You know, this author says this, that YouTube person says that, you know, who's, who's right or wrong or, or how can I meld these things together? Um, there's different systems of tarot or schools of tarot, um, and so how, how can you um, kind of separate that all, all out and make sense out of it? Um, and I'll just, I'll just tell you the way that I kind of think of the, the different ways of thinking about tarot or different categories of tarot decks that are out there. Um, so to me, there are four categories of tarot. Um, other people might break it up differently, um, but I would say that the, the first category would be the historic Italian decks. Um, Tara was uh, developed in northern Italy in the mid-1400s, and um, as you might expect, given that location and time period, the artwork is, um, you know, Renaissance Italian style art. Um, this is a modern reproduction of the Visconti Sforza deck. Um, so this is one example of, you know, that kind of artwork. Oops. Sorry. 
Okay, so it's got the gold foil, but also the um, the hand painted look. And um, you know, as beautiful as these are, um, if this is really your jam, I would say go ahead and get yourself you know a nice deck to work with. Um, but don't be surprised if this is a little bit hard to work with because um, at that time, Terra was a very different animal than how we use it today. So I would tend, if it's a beginner, I would tend to steer clear of any kind of historic um, Italian deck for the time being um, until you kind of get more knowledge. And then, you know, if you're interested in working with these historic images, then obviously feel free. Um, next in chronological order would be the Terra of Marseille. And um, so this uses uh, a very specific kind of arrangement of the suit cards. Um, they're all stylized like this, so this is the Three of Swords card from the Marshmallow Marseille. Um, but they have all these geometric patterns, and you know the patterns are significant. I'm still learning a lot about the symbolism, but the patterns and the the foliage and all this stuff, even the colors used, can be can be quite um, important in reading this style. And this, I think, is a perfectly good style for beginners, especially if you are interested in maybe older styles of cardamancy, um, uh, fortune telling with cards. Um, and then to get started with uh, learning about Marseille, I would really highly recommend this book. This is The Marseille Tarot Revealed by Yoav Ben Dove. Um, he also published this book under another title. Um, which is Tarot the Open Reading. Um, however, I really recommend this version. Um, if you live in North America, you can get this book from Llewellyn, um, and I'll put a link below. The reason I like this book is that it is entirely full color, and you get these massive um, uh, graphics or you know versions of the cards um, with each with each description. So. Um, it's really easy to follow along with what he's um, talking about with the symbol. Every single card here is represented in full color. And the author actually um, created his own deck as well, so you could also pick up a copy of um, his deck to go along with the book. Um, I personally don't love the, um, the primary color palette used in traditional Marseille decks in general. So I have a lot of alternatives like this Marshmallow Marseille that use, you know, different colors, pastels or earth tones or things like that. Um, so that's another option because this book is in full color. Um, you could just get the book and then you could get another, you know, style of Marseille. Um, I also have this goofy one that's actually a gilded Marseille. Um, you could get another style that appeals to you and use uh, those cards for practice readings and study. Okay, so I think um, in the first category, the historic Italian, probably not a great place to get started if you're totally unfamiliar with tarot. Um, second category, chronologically, Marseille tarot, yes, go, go for that if it's appealing. Um, the third category of tarot um, is really Rider Waite Smith. Um, but I would probably lump it in with sort of Golden Dawn um, tarot approach in general. Very esoteric, um, very much connected um, with other esoteric practices such as astrology, alchemy, um, and those kind of things. And so if that appeals to you, um, or if perhaps, sorry, I'm looking around for my copy, uh, you just happen to have a standard issue <laughs> yellow box, um, tarot and you want to learn more about this specific imagery, um, you can start with, um, you know, learning about the Rider Wade Smith system. Um, and I think the best resource for that is going to be Rachel Pollock's uh, book called Tarot Wisdom. Um, if you're not familiar with her, Rachel Pollock is really a, a heavyweight author um, in the world of tarot. She's written a number of books. She's um, uh, been practicing tarot for almost 40 years now. So she's quite an expert and, and quite authoritative um, and, and just has a lot of great knowledge. And her book um, that was published, I think back in the 70s or early 80s, was um, 
78 Degrees of Wisdom. That one is highly regarded. It's sometimes referred to as the Tarot Bible, um, even though there is no such thing. <laughs> um, but she's really great. What I like about um, Tarot Wisdom, and the reason I'm recommending it over 78 Degrees of Wisdom, is that this one was written, you know, 20 years after. So she had even more personal experience. She'd been teaching Tarot um, for a longer period of time and just had a lot more insight into the cards. Um, and the other thing about Tarot Wisdom that I really appreciate, um, both this one and the Marseille Tarot Revealed talk a lot about Tarot history and they dispel a lot of goofy myths like you have to steal or find your first tarot deck or um, you know you have to use certain props or certain setup when you read. Um, it, it's just nonsense but um, <laughs> you know they, they go they both go into that. Um, let's see Rachel Pollock in her book actually includes images from a lot of historic decks. So they're not in full color, but you kind of get a sense of the evolution. Um, this would be the Three of Cups card right now. And so you can see it in all the different iterations, including the Rider Waite Smith here, um, but also the earlier Italian decks, a Marseille deck, um, an earlier, a, a pre RWS Golden Dawn interpretation. And this just gives you a really good sense, I think, of the cards. Um, and how their interpretation has evolved without being completely overwhelming. And, you know, it's nice that she includes so many images in one resource because you don't have to go out and buy, you know, five different decks to study with. Um, again, it's, you know, it's a good economical way to kind of get all that information in one place. Um, and with that, um, you know, you might have your standard issue yellow box, um, Wait Smith cards, but you could use any Rider Waite Smith system um, tarot tarot deck. So you could go for um, this is my favorite, the Smith Waite uh, Centennial in a tin. You could go with, for like a modern redrawing of that. Um, you could go for something that's not even by those those deck creators, but is based on the Rider Waite Smith system. So something like this is the World Spirit. Um, which draws from a lot of different cultures around the world and um, has a lot of, uh, you know, more diverse representation of um, people's physical appearance. So different body types, different skin tones, different ages. Um, I really appreciate this deck for that reason. Um, or you could pick a Rider Waite Smith. There, there are probably thousands of Rider Waite Smith based decks out there. It's certainly the most popular. Um, system for for reading tarot and so you could you could pick one with the imagery that appeals to you even if that's kind of niche imagery there's probably you know some kind of a deck for you this is one that I just got I haven't really played with yet um, but it's called tarot in space and it's based um, the author Laura Loop um, is also a sci-fi author and it's based on original characters that she's developed and their adventures in space and you know so it um, the imagery kind of is her own take, but it all ties back in with that Rider Waite Smith system. Um, and I will say that um, if you're studying a particular system, another great resource is um, apps for your smart device, um, your mobile device. Um, there uh, is a company called The Fool's Dog, and they publish applications. Um, here is their classic 1910. I don't know if you can see this, but it just has all the cards in here. So this is nice, you know, when you're traveling, um, or you're on the go and you want to be able to refer to a specific card, you can pull it up on the screen, you can study it, you can, um, I think on this one, if you tap on it or something, yeah, there's like a meaning, you know, it gives you some text to go along with it. You're not going to see that on the screen, but anyway, there's text on my screen here that explains, you know, sort of the basics of, of the card. And what I like about these apps, um, and you can get them for, for some of the modern decks as well, is that they, um, they can help you in your studies, but you don't have to necessarily buy the deck. So if you got, you know, an alternative um, deck for, for use, but you still wanted to refer to the imagery in, um, you know, the, the, the classic box. Um, you could, I think the apps are like three or four dollars. 
um, so a lot less than the cost of a tarot deck, um, you could get an app and study it that way. Um, okay, so that's that's Rider Waite Smith, that's Golden Dawn kind of in a nutshell. And then the fourth category um, really is an offshoot of Golden Dawn. Um, so the Golden Dawn was in a secret society. Um, it was an organization around the uh, late 1800s and early 1900s um, over in England. And then there were some folks, um, including Arthur Edward Waite and Pamela Coleman Smith, who developed their own tarot decks. So another member of the Golden Dawn Society um, spun off. Uh, his name was Aleister Crowley. You may know him um, just from history. He was qu kind of a, I don't know how to describe him. He was he was a personality. Also, I'll, I'll just summarize it that way. Um, and he had a lot of strong views and decided to redo the tarot in his own way. Um, and that's known as the Thoth system or the Crowley system. Um, and so you'll see decks um, both that he developed, uh, Aleister Crowley developed himself with the help of an artist, um, as well as a, f you know, a few other artists um, who have since put their own spin on his um, interpretations and come up with their own Thoth-based tarots. Um, I don't have any examples to show you because I'm not currently studying that system. So, um, and it, I think it's kind of specialized. I think if you were interested in Thoth, I would still start with Rider Waite Smith and then branch out and go to Thoth after that. Um, particularly because of the way that Aleister Crowley um, has this whole epic of, of the court cards and the interaction between the knights and the kings and the queens. And um, he, he redid all that in a very specific way. And so again, I, th I just think that that's a little bit, I don't know, it might be a little bit um, more detailed or more specialized, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Um, so again, there's nothing wrong with it. If you wanted to start there, you certainly could. There are resources, but I can't point you to specific things. So I would probably st still recommend that you either pick Marseille to start or Rider Waite Smith, and then you know, then you can swap. You know, you can learn the other one, um, or you could branch out into Thoth if that was appealing, um, or go back and look at ancient Italian. Uh, tarots and see what those can bring to your practice after you kind of have a foundation. Um, in looking at the Tarot de Marseille and the Rider Waite Smith uh, systems, um, as I said, I'm I take a, an academic approach when I'm learning something new. I like to read about it and learn the history and all of that. And then I also like to kind of have a, a, a prescribed way. Um, to kind of do practice. I need I need prompts. I need people to kind of tell me like, hey, try this in your practice or try that. Um, and because I don't have a, a specific tarot teacher um, or, you know, workshops to go to, I'm, I'm shooting these videos in June of 2020 if you're watching in the future, um, you know, we can't go to tarot class right now. So instead of that, um, I can recommend some workbooks that I found useful. Um, and there's sort of a workbook for each school. So for our Marseille workbook, I would recommend um, the Tarot, Tarot on Earth by Tom Benjamin. Um, and this is a book um, that talks about pip decks in general. So, so not just the Tarot Marseille system, but um, any deck that represents the uh, ace through the ten um, in terms of just a number of objects on the card versus scenes, where, um, which you get in other systems. And the Tarot on Earth, you know, it's it's very, it's very it is very practical. The subtitle is a practical approach to the cards, um, but his teaching style is very practical. Um, Tom Benjamin is a professional um, educator as well, and he understands adult learning. He understands what it's like to come into a new subject as a grown up, and you know how to how to keep you interested, how to keep you engaged, and how to get you um, into some real world practice with it. So I appreciate the exercises um, and things that he goes that he goes through in that book. Um, if you are looking to get some hands-on practice with the Rider Waite Smith system, um, then I can recommend this companion workbook um, for tarot wisdom. And this is the easiest way to learn the tarot ever with two exclamation points. 
Um, the author is Dusty White. And I haven't used this book as much because I kind of got sidetracked in my own studies. I started with Rider White and then I kind of immediately went over to Marseille and I've been immersing there. But I'm going to come back to this one. Um, now she does have, I think, a more prescriptive um, view on some card meanings, which always rubs me the wrong way with authors. But there's so many good exercises in here that I think it's worthwhile to take a look at the book. And then, you know, if you disagree with her um, in a few instances, that's okay. Um, it's, I think it's, you know, there's no one right, right way to do tarot or to, to come up with, um, you know, what the cards mean to you. So I think reading a lot of sources is great. Um, and then kind of synthesizing that with your own personal practice and, um, you know, eventually it'll start to make sense to you. Um, and so you don't have to agree with everything that everybody writes, um, even if it's in a big fancy book, um, even if they've been studying tarot for 40 years and you've only been studying it for three months like I have. Um, but I also think it's good because you can take that information in and then who knows, in a few years, you know, something may come up in a, in a reading and you go, oh, I read that in that book that I read two years ago, you know, um, that kind of thing. So, um, I will go back and say also that I appreciate um, that Rachel Pollock, um, so in her book, The Tarot Wisdom, and also Yoav Bandov um, in The Tarot Marseille Revealed, um, they're not very prescriptive with um, their card meanings. They don't say this equals that. Um, they do give you some kind of jumping off points. They give you some um, you know, traditional interpretations, um, but they also leave it open-ended enough that you can come up with your own um, ideas for what the cards are saying in any particular situation um, in response to any particular prompt or question that you're, that you're throwing at them. So that's, that's really why I'm recommending these two books in particular. Um, there are a lot of tarot books out there. They're, they're, again, if there's thousands of decks, there's probably hundreds of tarot books. And a lot of them, um, you know, it's like reading the dictionary. It's it's just it's very dry, and there's very there's this sense of like really sweating over memorizing um, card meanings, and I just don't learn that way, and I don't think most people really under understand um, new information in that way. Yes, I can sit down and memorize a list of definitions, but then you get into a reading, and what are you going to do with that? You know, so that's why I'm really recommending these two books in particular to get started, and then these workbooks um, as well, because for the most part, um, all of this is just to get you, get you going, get you thinking, maybe give you a little bit of history as a foundation, but then send you off in your own direction and let you start practicing um, with tarot, which is really the best way to learn, right? Is to just get in there and do it. Um, so those are my recommendations. Um, and I will put links to all of these resources uh, below the video. Um, and yeah, you know, dive in, uh, get started. If you are new to tarot, or if you're if you're not, if you think back to beginning um, beginning your own tarot practice, I'd love to know kind of what helped you. How did you get started? Um, what was frustrating in the beginning, and what resources were the most helpful um, for you as a new beginner? I'd love to know. Um, thanks again for joining me, and tune in next time uh, for more tarot stuff. In the meantime, be well. <laughs>